I thank everybody for coming. This is a big deal to me. It was like, you know, the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it's going to be okay. Everybody was good to me. So I kind of just wanted to do this and get everybody together and uh, make it a good time. So I'm not going to talk about the pressing stuff. We've already gone Please don't. That. But, um, so you guys all know the quote, man's best friend and all that stuff. And they don't just call it that for no reason. It's a real reason the dog loves you like nothing else in this earth. The dog is loyal to you like nothing else in this earth. I had a special bond with Chuck. I can't put it in words. He was literally like my son, my best friend, and my therapist. So he can't be replaced. I know that you guys all get that. So that's why you're here. But um, you know the quote, like, my dog's the best dog. Everybody thinks their dog is the best thing, just like kids. My, my kid is the best kid. The truth is, they're all the fucking best dog, and they're all the best kid. And I, I believe in the greater power the dog finds us. I don't think you find a dog. I think the dog is put to you, you know, from divine intervention or whatever you want to think. And I just think he was the best thing for me. Just, you know, the unique personality of him and everything like that. But, um... There's so many unique characteristics he had that were, you know, like never, it'll never be replaced. But um, I met him in 2008 when I met her, and then, like, he was outside. Cassie. He was <laughs> my wonderful wife. Thanks for that. So, so before that, I had, like, you know, I grew up with dogs. We all loved dogs. I had some sheep dogs and stuff, but I never had one that was, like, responsibly just mine that I bonded with. And when I, I used to drive out to Hickory when I could with my crazy schedule and see her, and she had a bunch of dogs, and he was outside the pen, and I just, I just fell in love with well, him. The first time I met him, it was just like, he was like, just so happy to see me, and so basically what, what would wind up happening is I would, like, I would be working a crazy schedule, and I would see her, but I would drive out there a day early just to pick him up and bring him back to my apartment and spend time with him, and he was, he was, he was skittish, he was scared of people, I think he was abused, but... He just like bonded with me and me. Not by me. And, um, <laughs> Not like Before we got him, let's clarify that. <laughs> so, so, so from there, I'm gonna bring this to you. His name was Chuck. I didn't name him Chuck, but if your name is Chuck, in my opinion, you're pretty much a fucking badass. I don't know anybody that knows a guy named Chuck that's not a badass. Every Chuck I've known is usually like a, a, um, a war veteran or just I don't know. You're a fucking badass. Like, there's exceptions to every rule, but Chuck Norris. Based on that, so I, I printed out a couple of things. I don't, does anybody know who Chuck Zio is? Yeah. He knows who he is. He's a fucking badass. He's, was he in Mafia or uh, oh, Hell's Angels? He's Show a martial there. artist. He played in the show Oz. Pass this around. That's fucking Chuck Sun's Zio. You, you don't want to fuck with this guy. You don't want to be, it's a bad day. Nobody knows about powerlifting, but there's a guy that has a world record in the 242 class. His name is Chuck Volgapol. He's known as the fucking badass of powerlifting. He's known for literally tearing a hamstring off on a Monday and then going back Tuesday to squat. That's Chuck Volgapol. So you don't want to fuck with Chuck Volgapol. Chuck Liddell. Everybody knows who fucking Chuck Liddell is. You know who Chuck Liddell is. The guys, you look in his eyes, he's like a fucking great white shark. You do not want to piss off Chuck Liddell. That's Chuck Liddell. Wow. All, <laughs> All right, I got two more for you. Fucking Chucky. I don't give a fuck if you like horror movies. I don't give a fuck if you laugh. You do not want to be fucking. You don't want to be on that dude's bad side. He'll fucking kill you. And then last but not least, come on. Chuck Norris. The OG. The original gang. So with that being said. I've got about two or three stories I want to tell you about Chuck that are fucking funny. Um, Alright, so Chuck looks like a little baby. Look at his things. He looks like a sweet little innocent. He's an innocent dog. He's, he looks like he's scared. Her. He was. He was very timid. But the truth of the matter is, he was an alpha dog. He was not scared. He hated other fucking dogs. If you, he either wanted to hump you or fight you. So if you were a female dog, yeah, he liked to sniff your cooch and hump you. But if you were a male dog, he had a problem with you. He, he felt threatened. And if you looked at him, you wouldn't think he was that tough. So I'm, I'm walking. So her brother, so he, he used to live in the kennel. Her brother tells me this story about how Chuck 
broke out of the kennel and got into this fight with this fucking big ass pit bull. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Because this dog comes over and he's like scared. His ta tail is tough. I'm like, that dog didn't fight no fucking pit bull. Pit bull, fuck. He's like, he came home bloody and it wasn't his blood. I didn't believe him. I'm like, no fucking way. So I used to take him for a walk in my old apartment, and I'm walking him, and there was this Mexican guy that lived in the apartments with us, and he had this fucking jacked pit bull. This dog was like fucking jacked, and he had like three collars and a fucking uh, harness on him. This dog was, had muscles on muscles. And one day I said to the guy, because we, we were crossing the pants, I said, that dog looks mean. And he, I don't think he could speak. He's like, he's not mean, he's not mean. He not mean. And, and then all of a sudden, Chuck, Chuck, you know, Chuck's fucking pulling at him, and the other dog's pulling. Chuck does this weird, Loop de loop jump on um what's that road that the opponents are on? Fate Church Road. Yeah, busy road. He does this weird jump and he gets free. He gets out of his collar and he fucking attacks his dog and they're fucking going at it on the side of the road. And I fucking dive on him and I fucking scoop him up. His hair is standing and he's snarling. And he's looking at the and the Mexican guy goes, Not eat me! And I was like, holy shit! And I'm just holding I'm holding this little skittish dog and he's fucking snarling his fucking hair is on. It was funny, it was like, it was a week, you know, like, a couple, a couple of months later, my mom and her ex-boyfriend, who's a fucking pussy-ass bitch, they were visiting me, and me and Cassie were at the store, and Chuck was guarding the bathroom, and anytime George, the guy, he was, he would try to go to the bathroom, he would just snarl at them, and my mom and, my, and, the, and the guy told me the story, I didn't believe it, I'm like, no, get the fuck out of here, but it was true, and uh, he, he was going to attack them if they tried to go to the bathroom, but, um, <laughs> I'm getting to that. And then there was a couple times when he, 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 would, he, would, he, would, he was a jumper. And we were in this apartment and we would meet with our realtor, Brandon Nelson. And it was three, so I had to work at the jail the next day. I had to get there at four in the morning. It was 11 o'clock at night. We were in the apartment, so the front door is locked. We're on the screen door. We're in, just sitting on the patio talking with the realtor, signing the final paperwork. Chuck and Cookie are sitting there. And Chuck's just doing this. And all of a sudden, you see his paw hit the latch. Clink, we're locked out. The latch is locked, the front door. And that's not the only time he done it. There so was candles had, burning, too. There was candles burning. We had to go to the The little Mexican guy had to come out in the middle of the night, and he got us in. But that's not the only time he's done it. He's locked me out so many fucking times because he jumps. But so and then the last story I have. All right. So he, he, that's my uncle, he, he, her, their daughter's ex-boyfriend had this dog named Jazzy. It was a female uh, chocolate oh, lab and we used to pet sit it. And he used to come here. And like I told you, he either wants to hump or kill. He wanted to hump this dog. <laughs> so he would chase it, they'd fucking play, and he'd be humping it, humping it. And then I had this friend come over. This is the first time he ever came over. This is the story. So he was a chocolate lover. Do you remember? He liked that. In the kitchen, he was gentleman though. He didn't touch unless you let him. He's air dancing. He's doing his little fucking air dance, and the female dog is sitting there. This is the first time Almeida came over. The first time with his wife, and he's fucking doing his. And all of a sudden, he skeets and shoots his load all across the fucking kitchen. And my friend was like, "That's fucking awesome!" I've never seen a fucking dog do that. So, there was a couple other things. Um, <laughs> that story didn't involve us all. He would growl a lot. Like, he, he was, if you got, even at me, he'd growl. If you put your face on his face, he'd growl. So, um, Randy's not here, but it would, it would be funny. One night, his friend came over and his wife was fucking drunk. And she was, she was like, putting his face like, Oh, he's so cute. And all you saw was him standing right on there, and his fucking hair and his tail. And he was just like this. Right in front of him. He was too drunk to realize that Randy was like, oh. He's never been a person. He's bit many dogs, he's never been a person, but he's he's had a mean side to him that a lot of people have. Because he looks like a little fucking timid baby, but he's. He had a mean side to him, so other than that, I used to take him for a walk sneezing? every fucking day. No, it's her sniffing no the floor. I was, what? Ship, I'd come home, I'd, her sniffing the floor. I, I, I took him for a walk. She's at the door, sniffing. We used to, uh, I named my gym after him, Chuck's Barbell, so his legacy is going to continue, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's it.